What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about streaming PS4 games. Now what I mean by that is, there's a lot of rumors beginning to circulate about the idea that some consoles that could be coming out relatively soon will not have disk drives. Instead, you're going to be streaming a majority of the content, which I mean by connecting to the internet and just playing them off of servers. This is a concept that I am very, very against. I don't like the idea of it, but I try and be open-minded. So what I decided to do is actually install PlayStation Now. This is an app that's available on the PlayStation 4 that basically lets you play a giant library of games for a monthly fee. I decided to get the free trial and basically just spend an entire week playing everything I could. Fighting games, shooters, action adventure, a little bit of everything to try and get a taste of just how much this works. Now before we begin, I just want to say two things. One, I have pretty fast internet. I pay for it because obviously my job is online. And two, I directly connected my PlayStation 4 Pro via hardwire connection for all this footage. And even still, it's good but not quite perfect. Let's get into it. In order to properly analyze this, I think we need to first acknowledge the fact that there are different styles of functionality. Playing a game is about more than just the graphics loading right, having good frame rates. It's also about being connected to the internet smoothly when you're doing an online game, and of course, the controls themselves. If you're playing a game and it's not responsive and you end up dying because of not a lack of skill, but instead a lack of it working, that is a serious issue. So to begin with, I wanted to start off by trying some of the first-person shooters and some of the harder games like Bloodborne. Let's take a look at that one specifically first. So Bloodborne is an epic masterpiece. Obviously, I love this game a lot. And so as soon as I got into this, I tried to tinker around with fighting different monsters, basically seeing just how much I could react when I realized the fact that the controller isn't really doing anything except sending commands to a server. Is it able to do that? Surprisingly, yes. I mean, as you can see, I'm actually fighting this stuff, I'm able to do dodges, switch weapons, constantly consider what to do next. I'll say that this stuff seemed to have maybe a one or two frame delay, but in the grand scheme of things, that was completely unnoticeable. This is actually what shocked me the most, is that Bloodborne is a hard game. Honestly, I die in it a lot. But here, I could not actually blame any of my mistakes on the server itself. Whatever sort of connection speed is going on here behind the scenes, clearly it works extremely well. Let's actually shift gears to something that's a little bit more modern, which is Prey. So this is obviously the Prey game from a couple years back, but this game can be really, really tough. It's gorgeous, it's got a nice art style, but it's one of those games where you really need to try and plan out every single encounter, or else these cool aliens are going to eat your face. And unfortunately, when I started playing this game, I noticed that there was something in this that felt a little bit sluggish. It almost felt like the controller itself was wrapped in plastic or something. That's really the only way to describe it, which was where it felt like a lot of my commands were going on a little bit longer than I wanted them to. Sometimes I would accidentally aim a little bit too far, simply because it just felt like I myself was being delayed by the game itself, which unfortunately led to me dying right here. Now, I did notice that other games, they managed to handle this a little bit better. What I really kind of want to highlight here for a second though is the graphics. So one of the weirdest parts about the idea of streaming games is that obviously somewhere many miles from here there is a Sony headquarters. There is some place where I am connecting to their computer and it's already trying to graphically process every single command I might do that way it can send me those frames. That's actually how the streaming service works. So what happens when I play a game that's a lot more slow and methodical? Well this is the horror game Soma, one I actually really really like. It is something that really frightens me and really gets me thinking about the nature of horror. Well when I was playing it I decided to just basically tinker around in the opening to see how much the game can look beautiful because obviously the faster things are the more there seems to be this weird pixelation. Something starts to sort of cover the screen with like a bunch of little cubes that are very very annoying. Well in a very slow methodical game like this it's able to fully process every 
single bit of the sparkle effects in this glowing cell phone in my hands, which is pretty dang cool. Honestly, it really functions pretty nicely, and while I didn't beat the entire game in this stream right here, it was something that I could definitely tell that if I had chosen to do so, I very easily could. Now, I actually want to shift gears because so far I've been pretty positive, but we need to highlight the fact that there are some very massive flaws as well with streaming services. So PlayStation Now is something where apparently you just pay like a monthly fee and everything can just be streamed directly off of the Sony servers. It's also an option to install games, but for this video I purposely did not do that. I actually wanted to see just how well streaming technology works in the modern age. And so I decided to play For Honor. This is a game that has a lot of problems with it, but a pretty dedicated fan base. Well, as soon as I started trying to log in, I noticed that there was actually a substantial issue. You see, this game is always online. It is a game that takes place on the internet, and you need to stay connected to the internet to do anything, including single player missions. Well, as you can see for yourself, it seems like the ability to try and connect to the server and Sony's options at the same time actually over loaded my bandwidth. I could not log into the game because I was streaming it. I was getting it off a, of Sony's network, and so therefore I could not connect to Ubisoft's network, the publisher of this game. Straight up, it would not allow me to do it whatsoever. There was just too much of a delay between commands, I guess, and it would not let me log in. The fact that this is even on the streaming service seems like a little bit of an oversight since it looks to me like it would not at all function. That seems like a giant problem, and does make me a little bit worried about the future of streaming services because I am somebody who really, really loves online multiplayer. That is a giant thing that I spend a ton of hours doing. I mean, seriously, I have put hundreds of hours every single year into stuff like Call of Duty multiplayer and online games like Final Fantasy XIV. Being able to log into these things, make some friends, kill some enemies, that is a giant part of modern gaming, so the fact that it it doesn't really seem to really mesh with the idea of online services like PlayStation Now or maybe things like the Google Cloud that's about to come out, that does worry me. I still want to say that this isn't all bad. Let's change back for a second to just talking about general functionality though, things like the controls themselves. Let's play a game that actually takes an incredible amount of timing and momentum, which is of course Mortal Kombat X. This is something that has giant tournaments all based around just basically how good you could pull off a combo and how quickly you could press every single button in succession. I am a big fan of fighting games, even though obviously I'm not the best at them. So I decided to pick my favorite fighter and start trying to kick some butt. And it's here that I was perhaps the most impressed. This game is not installed. It is not running off a disc. It is not running off anything except the Sony Cloud. This is it. And every single part of it is seamless. This is 100% flawless, other than, of course, the fact that it does have some visual problems. I will say that graphically these games, the faster you're going, by far the worse they look. And it is something that can become a little bit distracting, especially when you're just trying to really get into the zone. The better a game looks, the smoother it runs, the more you can really get yourself tuned into it. And here, that unfortunately just wasn't exactly an option. Now the last thing I really wanted to try and test out among all these different games that I played during this week is actually a PlayStation 3 title. So something that specifically is supposedly going to be great about this streaming future is the fact that apparently a lot of people are already promising the fact that you will be able to play a lot of older games. This is actually something that is already offered as part of the PlayStation Now package. So I decided to stream a little bit of Fallout New Vegas, a very very good game that is obviously a merge of RPG mechanics and a typical shooter, and after playing it for about an hour, I noticed that the game has some serious screen tearing and a lot of visual errors that are very, very distracting. Is this because it's incompatible with the hardware, or is it just the fact that something about this isn't completely gelling together with the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 4 streaming services? It's something that probably worries me the most. I want this idea of gaming to work. I want it to be able to 
to be as fast and fun as possible. But right now, even as good as this stuff is, I'm still not completely won over by it. I'm glad that this exists as an option, but it's hard to really picture an idea the fact that this stuff might become more predominant. The fact that we're already getting consoles without disk drives so freaking soon does worry me a bit if this is the very best we have to offer. It's sort of impressive just how much this is even possible. In 2019, we now have video games that can be this gorgeous and this special and this fast without actually having a disc or a download or anything, which is still something that can't help but sort of melt my brain. This really is the future, and clearly the technology is finally beginning to arrive in the way that we originally envisioned. Sony has put hundreds of millions of dollars into this research and just trying to build this infrastructure structure, and clearly the experiment is finally starting to pay off. But what did you think? Are you somebody who is very, very against the idea of this sort of technology? Are you somebody who only likes cool physical games, or are you somebody that's at least slightly on board with the idea of a cheap, always streaming, always online console appearing sometime in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.